I'm Phil Warren. I'm a research engineer who works in the field of imagery, both capture and display, and uh, when I'm not in the lab, I do the exact same thing, but with my own cameras. And I'd like to share with you a novel new exploration I've been working on. Um, imagine a rainbow. Actually, you don't need to imagine it. Uh, I'll show you. Now, this is a pretty good representation of the electromagnetic spectrum that is visible light. Light has a wavelength. And like everything else on the electromagnetic spectrum, we can perceive everything ranging from violet around 380 nanometers to deep red around 720 nanometers. Now, as we look up at a rainbow, photons rain down upon us like so many droplets of splishy, splashy color. However, our human eyes can only capture a certain range of those photons. Blue, below the blue wavelengths, ultraviolet photons go unperceived, but those aren't what we're going to talk about today. And above the red wavelength, infrared photons are likewise not seen. This means the rainbow is hiding something. <laughs> there are unseen stripes to this rainbow. And not only do I need to see them, I need you to see them too. That's the problem we're going to solve today. Going back to the rain of photons. Our awesome human eyes perceive color by catching those photons, those droplets of color energy, in cone cells that behave like buckets. Most people have exactly three buckets, and only three buckets in which to catch those photons. These buckets, which are actually three kinds of cone cells, are long cones which capture red light, medium cones which capture green light, and short cones which capture blue light. Uh, at this point, our brain is now given color information with these triplet sets of data, a paradigm we call the tristimulus model. We never directly perceive the spectrum because we can never dump out the buckets and sort the droplets to see what specific wavelength that photon was. Instead, we can understand intermediary shades of color by observing where the buckets overlap. If photons tickle both our red and green cones, we identify yellow or orange. If photons tickle both our green and blue cones, we see cyan or indigo. If we wanted to see the hidden stripes of the rainbow, we'd have to see the world with cones that perceived in longer wavelengths, say from 760 to 1100 nanometers. Let, let's figure out how to do that. Uh, cameras, unsurprisingly, are set up to mimic human eyes. However, the silicon sensor in the back of a digital camera is, by itself and before the camera is fully put together, uh, actually sensitive to a much wider spectrum, 300 nanometers to almost 1100 nanometers. Unfortunately, if cameras actually photographed in that range, the photos wouldn't accurately resemble the world the photographer was trying to capture. Uh, see, uh, the image on the left doesn't look right at all. To ensure that cameras do accurately capture color, a manufacturer would now install a hot mirror to bounce back photons invisible to the human eye. This is the camera that gets sold on the market, which accurately captures visible light and nothing else. In order to divine color from this single sensor, we actually coat it with a very fine array of translucent tiles, a color filter array. This only lets certain wavelengths into each pixel. If we think of each tile as a bucket, again, we end up with a group of three buckets. Again, the digital camera has taken light from the real world spectrum and sorted it into a tristimulus model with a red channel, a blue channel, and a green channel. Now you can tear apart a camera and rip out the hot mirror that blocks infrared photons, thus returning your sensor to a state where it can catch all the photons, visible or otherwise. In order to photograph our unseen rainbow, we have to do this. I wouldn't recommend you do this yourself. There's a shocking number of screws in that densely packed nightmare of electronics. And moreover, there's a solid chance your camera will never focus again. <laughs> but there are several shops that you can go to online that will convert your camera for you to see in the full spectrum. Now, if we want to photograph in infrared, we can order fairly inexpensive filters called IR pass filters, which are going to block out all the photons that are visible to the human eye. However, if you didn't take apart and modify your camera, 
all photons are going to be blocked by this filter. This is all well and good, but once we allow those photons outside the visible realm onto the color filter array, all bets are off. The translucent tiles simply weren't designed for this, so they don't know what to do. They all kind of fail the same way, allowing 50% of all infrared light in. This means our buckets overlap completely with no differentiation in the infrared spectrum. There's no triplet set of data, no tri-stimulus model here. This has a weird effect. When all the buckets are equally full, it doesn't matter if there's only a little infrared or a whole lot of infrared, the result is a traditional infrared photo with pixels that are grayscale, monochromatic. This is a white balanced version of a conventional infrared photo. We can't photograph secret beyond the black rainbow stripes this way. We'd only see a white band of light. See, I tried using a camera with the hot mirror ripped out. Now, there is an infrared photography community, including myself, that leans into this limitation in style, augmenting the monochromatic infrared with a little visible spectrum and then swapping channels to create a cotton candy color, which is artistically beautiful, but does not actually offer a colored concept of the invisible spectrum. Here's what, where we diverge and truly introduce a novel format. Maybe we could reconstruct an infrared rainbow with three different infrared photographs of our rainbow shown here in the visible spectrum. Except no filters exist on a consumer market that create the desired buckets in the spectrum. We can use the consumer filters I mentioned before that start allowing light in at different points on the infrared spectrum, but they all have no upper terminus. They all let in as high of wavelength as the sensor will allow meaning they all cut off around 1100 nanometers. I used three of these filters, mounting a different one in front of my lens for each shot to take these photographs. One allows in, in nanometers, 760 to 1100 to pass. We'll call the result image A. One allows 850 to 1100 to pass. We'll call the result image B. One allows 960 to 1100 to pass. We'll call this, unsurprisingly, image C. And maybe there's a creative way to computationally derive three separate buckets. Um, I took a look at those three photos. Uh, I took those photos without moving the camera, the light, the subject, or changing any of the settings on the camera. It was all just the rainbow that I created using a xenon bulb and a simple prism. Now, let's not forget that we're dealing with a digital image here, so now we can crack open the code and let our true nerd shine. I use Python to write my code for this, and um, remember, any time we're dealing with a digital image, we're really looking at a multi-dimensional array of integers, what we might call an m by n by 3 array, meaning height and width of an image, and then three stacks to represent the red, the green, and the blue channels. Given that these images are really monochromatic, we can simply average those channels to reduce noise and increase sharpness, then deal with each image as a 2D array, m by n. Now, as we have a wider spectrum than we want, but also know the light energy gathered by the spectrum we don't want, we can actually simply subtract one from the other to get the spectrum we do want. We can look at this operation as a Boolean on two matrices, or a unary cookie cutter operation. We can do basic subtraction between images to reveal the light energy of a specific spectrum. If you only take one fact away from this talk, it turns out you can isolate a spectrum beyond what optical filtering will allow by using math. To get the lowest stripe in this infrared rainbow, we can subtract image B from image A, leaving us with the light energy for the low bucket. And then to get the next stripes in the infrared rainbow, we subtract image C from image B and then we get this mid-band bucket. And we already have the high-band bucket in image C, so suddenly, possibly for the first time ever, we have a tri-stimulus model entirely in infrared. Because there's optical filters that weren't perfect and had a little roll-off, there's even going to be enough overlap to have intermediary shades. If we just drop these into a TIFF image file, like a red, green, and blue channel, we've imaged an infrared rainbow. Compared to the visible spectrum rainbow, <laughs> this rainbow is further out with narrower bands. Now, because this is a novel nameless method, I'm proposing it be named after the three cup game, Thimble Rig. 
And using the same technique on a Cracker Jack loving taxidermied raccoon, <laughs> we see his domino mask disappear and this cuddly trash panda has less to hide. <laughs> a pineapple growing in an arboretum becomes a ghostly and beautiful thing. And a rainforest orchid loses all of its attractors for pollinating insects. Um, thanks. If, if you want to hear more about this, I'd love to answer questions and chat about image technology. I'm Phil Warren. Uh, grab me after the talk or visit my website at philwarrenphotography.com or find me on social media. Thanks for listening. <laughs>